Back in May, a local forest, the one area of genuine natural beauty within walking distance from my home, became permanently inaccessible. The neighbouring golf course, it turns out, was unhappy with how easily explorers could meander onto their private property and decided to put an end to it. What was once a brief respite from the constant anxiety of world events has been physically blocked by a 10 foot high chain link fence accompanied by a sign that simply reads, trespassers will be prosecuted. When I first stumbled across the sight of an entire patch of natural land gated off, I felt exhausted. I spent a long time just standing underneath that fence, staring at the trees it now silently confined. I sighed and walked back home, back to the concrete and the glass, back to the four walls that have been my entire life since late March. I've been thinking a lot about nature recently. I miss it. I miss travelling, even if the destination wasn't that far away. I miss parks and seafronts, hills and forests, fresh air and flowers. I miss the mundane elements of natural life that we all took for granted. It's tough being stuck indoors, staring at screens, endlessly scrolling, seeing nothing but news. Everywhere you look, hiding just behind the immediate threat of the virus, the ever-present hum of climate change persists. Stories about floods, reports about ecological disasters, October days that feel as warm as those in June. In the same way the air feels electric just before a storm, so too does the earth feel poised for a disaster of an indeterminable magnitude. As I lie awake at night contemplating the future of our species and the sacrifices we unwillingly make by existing in the way we're told is correct by those in charge, I think often about the world we'll all leave behind one day. What will that look like? When the cities have rotted into dust and the rivers have ran dry? When the fences wrapped so spitefully around trees last longer than those who constructed them in the first place? When the only memory that humanity ever existed on the surface of this planet are the scars we permanently etched across it in our endless pursuit for expendable commodities? Will it be worth it? Will that truly be our legacy? One evening, while staring bleary-eyed into my handheld abyss, I came across a game called Terra Nil. For the past two weeks, this exceptional little project has given form to my troubling thoughts about nature and this planet we call home. It has taught me so much about our role on this earth and our collective responsibility to leave behind something worthwhile at the end of our tenancy. At first glance, Terranil appears to be a traditional city builder in the same vein as SimCity. Indeed, the core gameplay mechanics and goals are the same between both games. Both Terranil and SimCity are all about expansion, about maximising resources in order to achieve growth within a confined space. The difference is that while SimCity requires you to lay waste to natural environments in order to construct buildings, roads and other various utilities, Terranil tasks you to achieve the complete opposite. It is a game about reclaiming a barren wasteland, cultivating it into something that is not only beautiful, but entirely self-sufficient. Players begin a game with a limited number of resources and a small amount of machinery. Your first move is to place wind turbines, which can only be built on rocks. From there, toxin scrubbers can be placed within the turbine's limited power range, which cultivate the soil to make it nutritious once again. Greenhouses plant seeds, causing grass to erupt from the surrounding tiles, the resulting explosion of growth pouring precious resources back into your pool. Pumps pour water back into barren riverbeds, and water wheels create rocks, allowing you to spread your influence further across the wasteland. Once a certain percentage of the map is covered in grass and freshly flowing water, you are granted access to a new tier of technology. At this point, you are tasked with diversifying your ecosystem with different types of flora and fauna. Beehives transform grassland into fields of vibrant flowers. Machines utilise solar energy to transform greenhouses into desert-generating biodomes. A combination of the two causes a wildfire, which tears through your hard work, leaving behind only animals. 
ash in decimated buildings in its wake. But from that fertile ash, forests can be reborn, with the freshly cultivated trees serving as new homes for your once destroyed beehives. Stage 2 is all about exploring the symbiosis that exists between disparate ecosystems, gaming their requirements in a way that is mutually beneficial for your micro environment as a whole. It's fascinating stuff. Finally, when your once barren slice of earth is flourishing once more, it's time to utilise the tools at your disposal in the game's third tier. This final portion of Terra Nil is all about tidying up. Use rivers to pump moisture into the atmosphere, reinstating a weather cycle that causes clashing rain clouds to breathe life into every remaining tile on the map. Then, construct a rocket, pack up all of your machinery, and blast off into space. Leave nothing behind, except the ecosystem you painstakingly cultivated. See plants grow on their own accord. Watch as rivers are filled to the brim by rain that pours from a sky thick with clouds. And finally, observe wild animals cautiously return to this newly sprouted paradise. With a limited number of resources at your disposal and machinery accessible only when certain overlapping conditions are met, Terra Nil is, at its heart, a puzzle game. Like SimCity, the aim is to generate more currency than you spend, but with a limited number of usable tiles and the threat of a game over a mere misplaced building away, the game very much offers its own unique spin on the genre. But underneath these smart gameplay mechanics, Terra Nil offers a clear statement about our species' attitude towards our planet. It is partially an observation about the extent that we can damage our home, but it is mostly an uplifting attestation of our collective potential to tend to its wounds. There are many games that carry an overt environmental message, yet so many of them focus on nature reclaiming the earth from humanity long after we're gone. Terra Nil subverts this trope by instead presenting a scenario in which humans are both presumably the cause of the devastation, as well as the ones determined to reverse it. You don't play as a benevolent force of an unknown origin. You are not sprouting seedlings by channeling energy into the soil using naught but your godly powers. You're fertilising it with machines, human inventions. Whereas in other similar titles, technology and man-made structures are presented as villainous and toxic, in Terra Nil they are suggested instead to be useful, givers of life and beauty, but most of all, and perhaps most importantly, temporary. Your ultimate goal here is to step away entirely. Your job is to nurture, to oversee growth, and then leave as soon as natural order has been restored. This is not your world. You are merely its caretaker. The first time my tiny spaceship packed up my machinery before blasting off into space, I felt genuinely emotional. In a year as bleak as 2020, when issues such as climate change and environmentalism still feel like fringe topics ignored by powerful heads of state, to play something that approached the topic in such an optimistic way felt cleansing. I won't lie to you, I was taken aback by how effective a message Terra Nil conveys. In my experience, environmentalism is a tricky topic to approach. You only need to look at that game company's Flower, a game that features a section where a group of petals, guided by the player-controlled wind, start smashing up huge pylons in order to restore life to a corrupted environment. The line between subtle messaging that gives you the space to explore your own interpretations to towards a complex topic and overt imagery of petals drop kicking a nuclear power plant is painfully thin in video games, but Terra Nil offers its statement with an almost pragmatic confidence. This landscape is fucked, it says. It's your job to fix it, and when you're done, you leave behind nothing that could potentially compromise it once again. Better yet, the game places no responsibility at the feet of the individual. Whatever cataclysmic event rendered this land barren isn't explicitly mentioned, and the game is all the better for it. It doesn't matter. 
What matters is how you make it right. But most importantly of all, the game makes it clear that you are not alone in this endeavour. This is a group effort, a species level effort. Together, collectively, restoring life once more. Through play, I reflected a lot on the task the game was asking me to complete. It was tricky, frustratingly so. At times, it felt like it couldn't be done. Not every decision I made was the right one. I would run out of currency, no matter what tier I was at, and the soil would die once more. There are no save states or checkpoints here. Every time I failed, I was forced to restart from the very beginning. But that was okay. I just kept trying, and eventually things would fall into place. The ecosystem would be restored, harmony would be achieved, not through brute force, but through nurture and patience. Look, maybe I've just spent too long reflecting on our purpose here on Earth at 3am in an existential mood. Maybe I've been stuck indoors for too long, subjected to the everyday horror show that is simply existing in Hell Year 2020. Maybe when things are so bleak, I I turn to video games to find meaning and understanding about a world that I find so frequently incomprehensible. Maybe it just feels nice to have some semblance of control over something I am so powerless to change. Maybe Terra Nil is just a pixel art city builder about planting grass. And yet, Maybe Terra Nil is about our collective responsibility to nurture our home, to treat it with care and compassion, to think collectively about our legacy as a species, to consider what echoes of our existence will be imprinted on the planet that we call home. If we make the right choices, Terra Nil seems to whisper, no one will ever know we were even here at all. Thank you.